Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and this is my beginner's guide to Azamanic, aka the hunt you farm if you want to farm the other four hunts in the game faster. Azamanic is often overlooked as a hunt, I feel, but it's crucial, in my opinion, that you farm it because it has the coveted Rage set. In case you don't know, Rage is a set that gives the most amount of damage compared to every other set in Epic 7. It's better than speed, it's better than destruction, it's better than attack for damage. The condition is, though, that the person wearing the Rage set has to be attacking an enemy with one or more debuffs on them. If you've been paying attention to my other three beginner hunt guides, then you know that each of those hunts requires one or more debuffs on the boss in order to kill it in a timely manner. See where we're going with this? Raid set is going to be the best overall damage set option for each of these hunts. It's what's going to let you upgrade from these beginner teams into the more advanced ones. Sadly though, Rage is only really used in PvE content. So I find when I talk to players, they often neglect this hunt and don't farm good DPS gear on the Rage set. Again, that Rage set is what's going to let you farm these hunts even faster. Faster clears means that you're going to see more equipment in a shorter amount of time, which increases the likelihood that you will find a good piece for your characters. It's going to be what lets you upgrade your account that much faster. And that's completely independent of the fact that it's going to be required for the highest difficulties of really challenging PvE content, such as Advent. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your very first as a manic team using entirely free to play units using gear that's for the most part found from the sixth anniversary dash pass event or the game's adventurous path. There's also a couple of pieces from the game's arena shop, which is again entirely free to play and like one or two pieces that I picked up from hunts here or there in the last two or three weeks since I started this account. Before we talk about the team and how to gear them, I want to first talk about the three keys to success I think every beginner team needs for as a manic. Number one, you need a powerful cleanser with either high effect resistance or is on the artifact Wondrous Potion Vile. There's a lot of debuffs that come out in this fight. You need to have a way to cleanse them and then also heal and sustain through them. Number two, you need the ability to reliably strip the Berserk buff that the boss generates. Throughout the course of the fight, the boss will get Berserk as you attack it and it stacks up the more you attack it without removing it. Once it gets to the highest tiers, it's going to do an incredible amount of damage, and there's a pretty good chance that you will wipe regardless of how tanky you are if you can't get rid of it. And then finally, number three, we need an AoE damage dealer because the boss spawns adds and has a passive skill that says as long as one or more adds are alive, it takes massively reduced damage, like 90 something percent. So you're not going to be able to actually kill the boss with just single target attacks. It's just going to take forever. So that's why we have to have an AoE damage dealer. So now that you understand the three keys to success, let's talk about the team, why we're playing them, and offer some alternatives as well in case you just don't want to build these characters or you might have potentially a better option in your box. So let's start with the tank roll. I'm playing Adventure Roz because he's probably the best overall PvE knight in the game. As for how we have him leveled, level 60, 6-star six Awoken is ideal, but you could do it with level 50, 5-star Awoken. Make sure that you unlock his entire skill tree so he has all of his bonus effects. The main reason that we're playing Adventure Raz is because defense buff on the S2 to help mitigate damage, defense break on Command Strike to help speed up the run, and most importantly, X Slash has a 75% chance to remove Berserk from the boss. As for the stats, 65% effectiveness is the most important stat, 65 to 70% or higher. That's what's going to give you the ability to use X Slash to remove Berserk with Roz, right? So that's really, really important. Boots are speed main stat. Health percentage is going to be your ring. Ideally, this is what you're going to have to use. You could potentially use effectiveness percentage to get that effectiveness percent chance. But then your tank might be really squishy. So I recommend health percentage here. Health percentage here also on the necklace. Artifact is Aureus because it's pretty much the best tank artifact. Adamant Shield if you don't have this. Proof of Valor for free could also be pretty good from your guild shop. As an alternative, you could also use Falconer Clurry if you just have her and don't have Adventure Raz all the way skilled up so far. Same artifact, same kind of stat distribution. The main thing that makes Clurry pretty good is the S3 has a defense break and also removes Berserk in it as well. And if you have Magic Resist here skilled up on the character and have her skill tree fully done, then she generates AoE healing for your entire team. So that is going to be something that you could consider as well. 
As for our cleanser slash healer, we're going to go with Tamarin, freely available through the game's connections. As for how to build her, level 50, 5-star Woken is sufficient, but if you want the easiest time, level 60, 6-star Woken would be ideal. Skill levels, plus 7 on Song of the Forest, plus 1 on Shining Star. These are the things that make Tamarin Tamarin. Artifact is going to be Wanderous Poshima, unless you can somehow get her effect resistance really high, which I find is very difficult for new players to actually accomplish. As for the actual gear, boots, speed, main stat, health percentage or effect resistance main stat here on the ring, and then health percentage as the necklace. Ideally, try to get the effectiveness up as high as possible on Tamarin. 65 to 70% would be ideal. And that is because after you activate Shining Star, Serene Tune here, as you see here, uh, idle mode attacks all enemies with a beautiful voice dispelling all boss so that is another way if you could squeeze effectiveness onto tamarin that you can actually remove the berserk debuff from the boss as an alternative if you don't have tamarin which by the way why are you don't you have tamarin like freely available through the connections you could also use angelic montmorency because she gets a ton of free effect resistance as you can see i'm on completely free gear on the character on an effect resistance ring and i have 190 percent effect resistance that is super good it's definitely going to let you not get hit by the silence from the boss you're going to freely be able to actually just cleanse off all the debuffs and sustain your entire team if you decide to go montmorency magaraha's tome for four stars is pretty good or rod of amaryllis if you have that uh, it is a five star not everyone's going to have access to it but that is a pretty good option for you uh, again montmorency level 50 just like tamarin is going to be sufficient now that we have two things out of the way, we have a way to remove Berserk, and we have a Cleanser, we need to go with a AoE DPS. So for this, I'm going to go with Vivian, because she's freely available by going up here to Event, Ongoing Events, and then coming down to Hunt Expert Challenge here. And you can choose the Banshee Hunt, which gives you Vivian for free, as long as you complete all of those quest lines. So she's freely accessible through that Hunt Expert Challenge. Definitely pick up Vivian. She's probably... The best overall hunt character in the game for most players before you get to the extreme late game. She's pretty much best in Golem, best in Banshee, best in Azimatic. You're going to be using her for a very long time. She's well worth your investment. Definitely pick her up for free. Since Vivian is our primary damage dealer, you want her to be level 60, if at all possible. 6-star Woken. It will give you the most amount of stats. As for how you skill the character, ideally you would like this character to be... Plus 15, get all these up here because she is your primary damage dealer. I'm a bit strapped for catalysts and resources, so I've decided to go with the, basically what you see here. Plus 3, plus 4, and then plus 0. But ideally, especially this one, mana amplification, you'd like it leveled. As skilled up as possible, it will make your life so much easier. As for the gear, I would ideally like to be a little bit faster. Normally, you would go the destruction set, the critical hit chance set, and stuff that you get from the game's 6th anniversary event. But I would prefer to you be on a speed set with critical hit chance as your offset using either dash gear or arena gear, whatever you have laying around. If you could get Vivian around 210 to 220 speed, that would be ideal. Try to get her critical hit chance up near 100% and try to get her to have some kind of sufficient damage. Artifact is Daydream Joker because it gives the most amount of damage to a damage dealer in PvE content. And then here for the exclusive equipment, which you could get enough currency for just by farming the game's hunts expert challenge you'll get enough to be able to unlock it via the game's hall of trials menu i'm going with the mana amplification combat radius increase by 50 percent but if you are still struggling with debuffs vivian does have a cleanse exclusive equipment that changes mana amplification into a way to dispel debuffs so vivian could also double as a backup cleanser for your tamarin or for your Montmorency, if you so choose. That's why she's super, super good in this fight. She can serve multiple roles for you, and again, the character is free. Now we come to our last flex spot, right? And that is going to be Mercedes. I've chosen Mercedes for a couple of reasons. Number one, she is an AoE damage dealer that can help kind of speed up the fight in case Vivian, for whatever reason, can't do her job. Number two, once you beat episode three of the story, she unlocks this powered up form with a different icon and you gain access to magic for friends, which will give you a basically a kind of like a strip or a counter strip on dimensional rupture. That is another way that we can remove Berserk off the boss. So she's multifaceted again, like you see with other characters here. AoE damage dealer, also a way to remove the debuff from the, I should say the buff, I should say from the boss, right? So... 
For Mercedes, ideally, level 60 6-star Woken would be the best because she's also a damage dealer. As for how you have her skilled, again, as much as you could get because this is all just damage and cooldowns. If you could get these up, that would be ideal, especially Dimensional Rupture. It'll give you a higher chance to strip. As for how we build her, similar story to Vivian in that you want to try to get her as fast as possible, have as much damage as possible. But since she could also double as a way to strip, getting that effectiveness over 50 to 60% would be super beneficial to you. If you don't want to play Mercedes or you just have this character in your box, Iseria is an incredibly good option for you because she also could be a backup damage dealer. She has reliable defense breaks to speed up Vivian's damage. And also, she has the ability to remove the Berserk buff off the boss. If you wanted to play Iseria, get 65 to 70% effectiveness, then just go straight damage from that point on. As for the artifact on Asaria, it would probably be Daydream Joker. Some people will advocate Song of Stars, but that will trigger a specific like rage mechanic from the Azimatic boss, which is not something I want to cover uh, in this guide. It's kind of beyond the scope of it. Just no, don't bring Song of Stars. It will actually make your life that much worse. So yeah, Asaria, I think also pretty good option. Now that you kind of understand the team, why we're playing it, let's jump into an actual fight with some commentary and I'll talk about some of the finer points. Just like with other hunts, you'll see that you start against three adds on this very first stage. The thing about these adds is they hit reasonably hard and they can also put out a lot of poison stacks. One of the reasons why I wanted Vivian to be a bit faster, why I want characters like Mercedes to be a bit faster, is I found when I was using the slower destruction set gear, what would end up happening is if you got bad RNG, all three adds would just attack Vivian or Mercedes at the start, give them like a ton of poison stacks and they would die before they even got a very first turn. So having them be a bit faster allows them to actually quickly kind of dispatch them and you don't have to worry too much about that random RNG fail. So as you can see here, one of the reasons why we like Mercedes, you get that counter magic for friends at the start if you get lucky off of that AoE attack. That'll essentially get rid of the actual ad, so you get a nice clean damage window here at the start. Having lots of AoE is very, very good. There's a number of other characters also, by the way, you could play over Vivian or Mercedes if you wanted to. Arbor or Vildred is fine. Regular Vildred, these are all fine. Anything that's just a solid AoE DPS will work in these slots. We get the defense buff from Raz. You can see it does like 436 damage. It doesn't do anything until you actually kill. And now we're back to dealing real damage again because there's no adds. So this silence here off the ultimate is very backbreaking. It's one of the reasons why you want a really strong cleanser. It's also one of the reasons why you want higher speed on your character so you can cycle out of it. Slower characters means you're more likely to be stuck with bleeds and silences. Tamarin's idol is a godsend in this because it gives us not only attack buff but a full cleanse. Gives us combat radius, gives us healing. It's why the character is so strong. There's that strip from Mercedes which is why I was saying have some effectiveness on your Mercedes if you decide to play her. Spell. Destroy all. 
No destiny can stop me. Together. How dare you? Take this. Here I go. And there you go. Asimatic down. This one overall, I think is a bit easier than Banshee, but not by much. Again, it really comes down to the speed of your characters. If you can get them faster, you will cycle out of debuffs more often. The debuffs I find are where most players are really struggling. If you're still having issues with Azume, feel free to ask questions down in the comment section below. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.